I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say that actual word. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. There's a rumbly in my thunder. Da -da 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 thunder. Dire straits and then kaboom at the very end. There you go. That that's a very accurate representation of drinking the go lightly solution. Anyway, let's talk about the types of examples we do. Of course, we have single versus double contrast. Double contrast can be a one or two stage procedure. Two stage exams will have the barium first as single contrast, then introduce the air afterwards to get the double contrast. So when we talk about two stage for large intestines, that's how it's gonna go. First introduce all the barium, then you pump the air in separately. But you can also do both simultaneously at the very beginning if they so choose, they have those options. The one stage is just put all at the same time. Two stage is barium first, then followed by air. Okay, contrast media. That's going to be a high density barium sulfate. It's going to be a bit of a thicker type than the kind you drink. Don't drink barium enema barium. It's not going to be a good time. It's very, very thick. Although you dilute it down with water. Um, it's going to absorb more radiation. We use it for our double contrast. Of course, air is what's most typically used for the double contrast studies. And they actually pump that air in. I don't know if y'all have seen a double contrast BE yet. Alongside that barium flowing into the colon, they have an actual pump that's hooked up to the probe and they're gonna pump air into the colon like they're pumping up a balloon. And it is as uncomfortable as it sounds. It's introducing a lot of pressure. The patient's gonna be bearing down, trying to push that probe out. They're also gonna be wanting to pass gas, but they cannot do so, otherwise it will mess up the procedure. So it's up to you as a tech to be right there with your patient, comforting them, making them relax, help them along that very difficult procedure. What are you scratching your face for? You wouldn't want someone helping you out? No? You just wanna go through it by yourself? Okay. <laughs> so carbon dioxide can also be used. That'll be more rapidly absorbed, but we're usually going to use the air pump method. This is the most common way we do it. Water soluble IDA contrast will be administered when there is a contraindication. And what's our main contraindication for large intestine guys? Bowel perforation, correct. But it usually is not considered satisfactory for double contrast. It will usually be relegated to a single contrast. Reason being, the air being introduced can aggravate the perforation. So if there is a perforation, not only are we going to use um, water soluble contrast, we're usually not going to use the air. It's just going to be a single contrast study. You should be able to really quick too, it flows super fast. All right, so preparation of the intestinal tract. The large intestine must be completely emptied of all contents because any retained fecal matter will stimulate small masses and also obstruct things that they want to see, things like polyps, diverticula, so on and so forth. You'll be on a very restricted diet bowel cleansing regimen, usually the go lightly, is standard for your healthy patients. And preparation for patients with severe diarrhea, gross bleeding, or obstruction is limited. So they're gonna usually do a different type of prep if they're presenting with those conditions and or schedule the procedure later because it's not adequate for that exam. So bowel cleansing methods will be your complete intestinal cleansing kit, that's the ones you drink. GI lavage preparations, and then cleansing enemas, which are the ones you don't want to do. It's as gross as it sounds. You insert an enema yourself and you flush yourself out. Mm. Yes? Uh, this is kind of a dumb question, but gross bleeding? What is, like... It's bleeding is just really gross. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, not really. It's um, it's just a heavy amount of bleeding. Okay. Like a gross is like a large like product. A gross amount. Okay. Gross amount. GI lavage preparations. That's escaping me at the moment. It's like something to drink. Someone want to Google lavage? I think it's lavage. French. Hmm? I think it's French. I think it's French. 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 Oh, French. French. Like when you go to hotels. Lavage. You gotta say it like that. Lavage. Yeah, I think so. Because when you go to hotels and you see those little like to go um, shampoos and whatnot, it always says lavage. Just sweet as GI lavage. You gotta say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Freshy fresh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, it's like you stick something up there, you stick a tube up there and you flush it out with water. Oh, oh okay, so you clean oh, it. Okay, yeah. It's like sticking a bidet up your rear yeah, and flushing it out. Yeah. Hmm? Do I sell it at Walmart? Yeah, you can buy those in the store. It's like a bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. Wow. Hey. Your search has All right, so as so bad as bad as the prep goes, you don't want to use the other two methods. I'll put it that way. 
stick with the prep. It's gross, but it's easier than sticking something up there and spraying water to cleanse yourself out. It's kind of gross. Huh? <laughs> oh, we're, we're just getting started. Just you wait. All right. Wait till we get to reproductive system. You lots of fun. All right. So, <laughs> disposable soft plastic enema tips and enema bags are commercially available. Have y'all seen the bags and tips at least? No. Yeah. No? no? No. You haven't seen this? That's all I want to I don't even know how this works. I've never heard about it. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly how it works. I'm quite the pro. I've done way too many in my career. I've never seen one. You go to pediatrics, you do them almost every day. Um, smaller enema tip, huh? Yeah. Why? Why? These have lots of bowel problems. Like their bowels are underdeveloped, and they have issues like tumors and blockages, all kinds of stuff. I know, it's so sad. I could never wear You gotta do it still. All right, so smaller tips for patients with strictures, fissures, inflamed hemorrhoids, Pray you don't get a hemorrhoid patient or other why? anal abnormalities. Why? You really want to know why? Yeah. Well, let's just say I did a tipping on a patient that had severe hemorrhoids. This guy had so many hemorrhoids you couldn't find the opening of the anus. Yeah. It was just like he was growing an extra head down there. Oh. Like it was it was bad. It was bad. Um, <laughs> and very painful if you're not not to be gross if you accidentally hit them or brush against them when you're trying to get the tip in there uh -huh. they can burst and bleed oh. and it's uh it's a mess it's, it's a mess like, I thought those were like inside. no hemorrhoids are on they, they can be on the outside you're thinking of like a hernia yeah. it's on the inside okay so retention tips have a balloon cup at the end why because when you insert anything into the anus what naturally happens you try to defecate <laughs> you try to find it push it out <laughs> yeah you try to push it out. So the balloon will be inflated with air after insertion, not before. Don't try to jam that up there with the balloon inflated to aid in retention of the enema. And this is exactly what it looks like. It's a big balloon. They're gonna feel a lot of pressure. They're gonna use this pump to pump that balloon up. They're gonna feel a lot of pressure and um, they're gonna be still wanting to bear down and push that out. In some cases, they can still push that balloon out. Remember that story I told you way back when the patient blew up on, on me? Mm -hmm. She shot that balloon out just like that. Fully inflated. Yeah. Almost hit me in the face. Oh. Okay, but how does it, like, what, what's the first step? Like, that's We're getting the there. We're getting there. This yeah. is the tip. This is for the air. This is, I'm sorry, this is for the balloon. This is like the balloon right here. This is for pumping extra air in through the ends. So, like, orange pieces. Uh, this is the tip. And you have kind of like a little bit of a guide. You have a little line right here that shows you how far to stick it in there. Dang. That's how far you can advance the tip. You want to advance to that point, otherwise this is not going to stay in. If you go beyond that point, you can inadvertently cause a major issue of that tip shooting up into their colon. Because if you stick things too far into the rectum, it actually reverses and suctions up. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful. That's how people get stuff stuck up there. But it has extreme to It's not that easy. When, you, when the suction occurs, it's almost impossible to pull it back out. That's why a lot of people who have foreign body insertions in the rectum have to go to surgery and have it cut out. Dang. Have you yes. ever seen one sucked up? Have I seen it sucked up? Yeah. Not the tip. I've seen lots of foreign body insertions though. No, but like while you were doing no, it. No, 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 no. Have you ever tried yeah, it out I'm going to leave that at that. Oh. No, I have not. I don't like torture my patients like right. that. <laughs> we're getting to that. That's, That's a valid question. question. That's disgusting. <laughs> Okay, moving on. So for safety, balloons inflated just before the examination, not early, you want to do it right before you start for comfort levels. Um, there's a potential for intestinal wall damage if inserted or inflated improperly. You have to actually insert that tip properly because the rectum is not just straight up, guys, it curves. Have y'all seen the anatomy, how it curves? You have to follow the curve of the rectum, you have to gently insert, have the patient relax. One of the worst things you can do if you're in this situation as you're inserting a tip and you feel uh, resistance, it means the patient is not relaxed, they're bearing down. Do not try to force the tip into the rectum because if you force too hard, you'll poke a hole through the colon. Don't do that. True story. You can do it. So you have to be very gentle. If they're bearing down, you have them relax, breathe, you start again. You gotta have them relax. You cannot force that tip in there. 
That's what's talking about when you can have damage to the walls. The balloon, you have to make sure you're inserted to the correct level. This tip has a line right here, like I said. You insert to that line, then you inflate the balloon. If you do it before or too far in, once again, you can cause actual damage to the intestinal walls and um, actually cause a perforation with the patients. So um, one complete squeeze will be enough to inflate the balloon. Don't do two. Just takes one. <laughs> <laughs> this takes one. Um, special tip is required for double contrast. These are the ones with the special tips, by the way, with the blue little nozzles. That's how you gotta pump the extra air in there after the barium flows through. Uh, let's see, enema bags, important number there, guys. Three quarts, 3,000 milliliter capacity. Registry question right there. 3,000 milliliter capacity on the barium bags. And yes, all that goes inside of you. It's a lot. It is a lot. And then you have to hold let it, it flow in. back out. You have to hold it in and you have to let it all come out afterwards too, back into the bag. It's as gross yeah. as it sounds. Yeah? Yeah, I, hi. Um, <laughs> you keep saying you, and I want to clarify, we don't have to do this as students, right? We don't have to actually like... Well, I'm sure you're gonna do it at least once in your career. Depending on where no, you're no, 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 but as mm. students, we're not gonna have to do it You used stuff. to have to. It used to be a competency to do the tipping. We don't require that anymore. Okay. Like, it's not that. Really it's really not that bad, guys. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 Honestly, yeah. Yeah. honestly yeah. I would yeah. rather yeah. do the yeah. tips yeah. than the yeah. 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 It's easier yeah. to do it yeah. if you want to. What if you don't get it? Can you simulate her up it down? Can you simulate the tipping? Yeah. God, I hope not. Because <laughs> most of the cops are going to find for your partner for that one. Ooh! <laughs> Don't be you! It's not going to be me. <laughs> they pass, automatic pass. <laughs> okay, moving on. So, um, most of your B exams, important number there, guys. Most of your exams are going to require 1,000 to 2,000 milliliters of pre mixed. Liquid, liquid barium, that's the optimal amount to fill up the colon in an adult patient. Mm. 1,000 to 2,000 milliliters. Oh, you like that dad joke up there. That one's gold. So how do I tell you about the Take these colonoscopy early. jokes and bury them. Did you somebody didn't mention of your jokes earlier? I'm just not gonna say a name, but someone made mention of my jokes. Make mention of your jokes and how they're not that great. I'm not gonna say which student said it. See, the fact that they're not that great is what makes them great. That's the artistry of a dad joke. They it's gotta be cringy. Oh, bury that. Oh, they said Mr. Fong's jokes were funnier than now it's a competition, I see. I want to up my game. Sounds like Mr. Fung said that. No, it's an actual student. It was an actual student. See, there, there is artistry to the dad joke being cringy that makes it more funny. And it wasn't me to start. You gotta understand. Wait, the, 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 um, the pre-mix? Pre-mix? Sorry? It comes in bottles. Pre-mix. Is that the one that we use for like the... So, that's a good question that Angelica brought up. Premix barium is going to come in a container already mixed up. You just pour it into the bag. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to take a powdery type barium substance, pour it in the bag, and put a certain amount of water in there to mix it all together yourself. That's really the two ways you do it. Most of the time, at least at TCH, we had to mix it ourselves. We didn't have the premixed ones. Mm -hmm. A lot of facilities do have the premixed as well. That's a lot easier and saves you time. Okay, I'll keep moving here, guys. Your optimal imaging. In double contrast exams, if the colon requires that high density barium, that's an 80 to 100% weight and volume. Write that bullet point down. That's the most important one on this slide right here. I'm going to move a little faster here to make sure we get this done today. All too busy. Huh? You're going to finish the whole part of the tipping? We'll see what happens. We're going to get through the, the majority of stuff you need to know. I gotta review all, I got, if we don't get to it, I gotta review all send y'all as well that you can practice with over the weekend. Okay guys, so for doing a barium enema properly, of course, patient cooperation is key to success. If they know they're having something shoved up their rear, they're less likely to be cooperative, yes? Believe it or not, most people coming in, well, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of people coming into this exam don't even know what's going on with it. The doctor has not told them what a barium enema is. 
they don't even realize they're having anything inserted into the rectum. So by all means, please describe to them what you're about to do. Don't just say, pull your underwear down, lay face down, and start inserting the tip. Put this in your bum bum. And don't say, put this in your bum bum. That's, that's not going to fly well. Please explain what a barrier is and explain how you can help them relax, how they need to relax, and how you're going to be with them through the whole procedure. You're going to be helping them out. You're like the... Um, you're like their comfort during this very uncomfortable procedure. That's one of our biggest roles as techs for BEs is being a comfort for the patients. And that is a large part of it because if they're not cooperating and they're tense and stressed, you'll have a big mess on your hands to clean up because they're either going to start leaking all over the place or they're going to shoot that tip out like it happened to me or a number of things can happen that's just going to make it a pain to clean up. Because let me tell you, when that tip comes out, if they're not near a bathroom, Guess where everything's going? Down and out. Your shoes. All over your table and in your table, by the way. Okay, so I'm side toilet. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right? You know because what I'm right? it's patients. A bedpan? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's uh. Not a bedpan, but the, the side toilet. Well, well, the yeah, like when you go camping and stuff. No, like when you go to the hospital. Because you know each room has yeah. a bathroom. Yeah. Right? Well. At least where I worked, the bathroom was right there oh, connected to the room, so it was just like two feet away. Oh. So the LBJ okay, too. So, uh, LBJ has like, the bathroom in there. So when you take no, it out, case. like it wants to come out immediately? Yes, yeah, so, so here's, well I'll get to that. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Well I'll go ahead and tell you. So when you're done with the procedure, so you hang the bag up above the patient because it's going to fill through retrograde action. It's going to flow in. Mm -hmm. You fill the colon up. When the procedure has finished, you take the bag and you put it on the floor. You allow as much barium as possible to drain back into the bag. Once it looks like it's almost back to the 3,000 milliliters, you're going to deflate the balloon. Please don't <laughs> deflate the balloon. <laughs> remove the tip, dispose of everything, and get them to the bathroom quickly to evacuate the I rest of the, the contents. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little there. valve, you undo the pssst, just like that, just like you said. Like Let the air out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, obviously very uncomfortable. What can you do? Tell the patient to relax the abdomen, easier said than done. Tell them to do deep breathing. Believe it or not, that does help relax the anal sphincter for insertion and keeping it in. And communicate the cramp, communicate, communicate cramping so that feeling can be slowed or stopped. That's for the patient, by the way. Tell them to speak up if they're having cramps because they will slow down the flow if it's getting too intense. Because if they cramp too much, they're gonna start bearing down, trying to push that out once again. Here in these pictures are pediatric tips, by the way. These are what you'll use for pediatrics. I've never used these two, but I use these two all the time. This one's the best one, by the way. Yeah. See how it's curved? <laughs> That's because, once again, the rectum is not straight up and down. It actually curves in that shape. So it's going to follow the actual shape of the rectum as you're inserting into the baby's behind. So do y'all just No, we don't. They're weak. They're weak. Just Why? trauma. They're wiggling and they're screaming. <laughs> so for pediatrics, what's tough is that three and under, have to use these tips. What do you notice is missing on these tips? The balloon. The balloon. No balloon. You cannot inflate a balloon on a pediatric because it'll actually tear their colon. It's okay. too small. So you have to hold it in. So Pause. you have to, huh? What? <laughs> you have to hold the tip in during the procedure for babies for three and under. So you have to master the art of squeezing the cheeks. That's how they taught me at TCH. You got to squeeze the cheeks until your fingers cramp. And your fingers do cramp because you're holding it for like 30 plus minutes. Trauma. You gotta keep those cheeks so tight. Like, unless you want from pushing, because the babe, those babies will shoot that thing out like a board. Right. They will they shoot that tip out like a board. Yeah, you gotta, I know you're not doing this. No, it's just, just me. It's just me. And, and the parents. Okay. So what's tough is while you're holding the tip in, you're also moving the patient around. So the doctor's like, put them in an LPO, put them in an RPO, put them in a lounge. So you're having to move with the parent while gripping the cheeks, <laughs> keeping the cheeks squeezed. So, and the baby's like, ah! freaking out. It's, it's hard, it's hard. Strange. Strange. It's so violent. It's so violent. But how do you... No, don't prep for babies. Okay. Yeah, it's only for adults. Okay, guys, it's also essential to allay fears and embarrassment because obviously a very sensitive area that we're exposing to the world when we're having these procedures. 
advise methods of retention. So I'm about keeping everything in. Please don't push things out. As best they can, tell them to. You're going to say you're going to feel like you've got to go to the bathroom. Please hold it in. Try not to push it out as best you can. Allow questions, provide answers within the scope of practice or refer the physician if you're uncomfortable. Provide adequate draping because their back end is exposed to the elements and to the world. Give them a sheet. <laughs> Keep a bedpan easily accessible in the room if available. For me, we didn't have bedpans. I kept a load of towels nearby because as well as I'm keeping those butt cheeks together, sometimes they're still leaking all over the table. And even patients like adults, if they have that tip in there, can still leak out sometimes. You want your towels nearby because you don't want that to make a mess on your floor. And worst of all, you want to get into the gears of the table. Worst case scenario, like if everything's coming out really fast, that can get into the actual circuitry of the x-ray table. They'll have to shut the room down, dismantle and sterilize everything. That's a nightmare scenario, trust me. Be aware of their strength, condition, and age. Prep may cause weakness. Elderly, of course, need that extra care and attention. <laughs> Okay, so um, patient care and prep. Call patient's attention to the call button in your restroom if this is needed. If they're having a tough time evacuating, make sure they know there's a call button. Which you're gonna, I mean, you can't really assist them much except give them some <laughs> advice. But um, if they need your help, they'll be able to call out to you if needed. Respect their privacy, but inquire frequently on their condition. Don't be knocking on the door like, hey, you okay in there? Like, sir, ma'am, are you doing all right? You need anything? Everything okay? And just say, I'm fine. Just give me a few more minutes. They're taking a long time. You okay in there? You doing okay? Just keep keep talking to them. Keep talking to them. Just after, after when they're getting everything out. Yes. Okay, so for the tip um, insertion, which y'all been dying to know about. Yes? Tip through. Okay, so we're always going to put the patient on their left side into the Sims position. Hey, that's coming back full circle, right? First semester. Sims position. <laughs> How do we do that? Roll forward 35 to 40 degrees. Rest on the flex right knee above and in front of the left knee. Sims position. Why do we do this position? I should have put this in red. That's a very important point for your registry right there, guys. The Sims position is optimal because it relaxes abdominal muscles, decreases abdominal pressure, and aids in relaxation of that anal sphincter. Once again, if you're trying to insert that tip and you are feeling resistance, do not try to force that tip in there. Do not. Now, I don't think it's in the notes here, guys, but make sure you do put lubricant on the tip. Do not put that thing in dry. That's, mm -hmm. that's a bad idea. Lubricant will allow it to slide in very, very easily with minimal resistance. Uh, adjust the pole with the bag no higher than 24 inches above the level of the anus because it's going to flow in with gravity. And expose the anal region only. Give them some sheets, but do leave the area of the tip visible so you know things are about to go south. No pun intended. <laughs> you want to be able to have your eyes on that area in case things are not going well and you can get out of the way. Trust me. Surprise. I've been in the splash zone way more times than I can count, especially with kiddos. Okay, there it is. Lubricate the intimate tip. Um, run the barium into a basin to remove air from the tubing. You don't want to introduce air accidentally. Other doctor will be pumping air that's done a different way. Don't, you don't want air in the actual barium flow. You can make bubbles which will cause more cramps. Instruct the patient to take deep breaths and then you're gonna insert the tip slowly, steadily, don't jam it in there at the speed of light, slowly, steadily, gently during expiration of deep breath. And you're gonna to talk to them while you're doing it, as awkward as that sounds. All right, sir, ma'am, I'm inserting the tip right now. Are you doing all right? Keep breathing, you're doing great. Big, deep breaths, blow that air out. All right, you're doing excellent. Keep going, keep going, you're done. You want to talk to them that whole time. Keep them distracted, keep them relaxed. It's not that bad, guys, I promise. You're doing great, sweetie. You're gonna direct <laughs> anteriorly, one to one and a half inches, then slightly superiorly. Why? Because once again, it's not a straight shot, it curves. You gotta follow the contour, the shape of the rectum. Total distance should be no more than four inches. You have a little line on the tip that shows you where that is. Never force the insertion. Ask patient to assist if resistance is met and if the patient is capable. I've never had a patient self-insert, but some people may ask to do that. They may be familiar with how to do that. So, uh, <laughs> say, oh I'm, not saying that, well, I'm not saying that to be weird. I'm saying, I'm saying that because some people have done enemas before and they've self-inserted for enema procedures at home, so on and so forth. If so, you know, people that are extremely constipated, sometimes the only way you can get the constipation gone is to do an enema at home. 
That's a real thing. It's a real thing. Just Is there relax. Like, no, no, I don't want to do this. Oh yeah, I've had people back out all the yeah. time. Yeah, when they find out where it is, <laughs> like yeah, it's no, a no, for me. no, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. Okay, so after the tip is inserted, hold in place while the patient turns. Even though your balloon's inflated, hold it in place. Why? It can snag on something. There's tubing everywhere. If it snags on something and rips it out of their rectum, you got a big problem on your hands. Um, hold it in place while the patient turns supine or prone, depending on what the doctor wants. Retention cuff will be inflated at this time. Free tubing of compression to ensure free flow. So there's a little stopper that squeezes the tubing. When the doctor tells you to free it, you pull it back and then the barium will start flowing into the patient's colon, so on and so forth. All right, single contrast. Of course, introduce patient to the radiologist. On request, release that clip to allow barium to flow. Flow will be suspended periodically to reduce cramping and defecation impulse, which you do get. They'll start doing their pictures, moving the patient around. Um, after all your images are acquired, Remove the tip after deflating your balloon first. Allow everything to flow out. Once everything's back in the bag, direct them to the bathroom to evacuate the rest of their contents as much as possible and send them on their merry little way. The procedure's done. So, yes? If it's the stool also comes out. The what? When the, the stool also comes out. The stool? It, yeah, when, uh, when you're uh, sort of. Well, there's no, there shouldn't be any stool. So that they, they're supposed to be cleaned out. It should just be barium coming out. Mm -hmm. If there is stool, they didn't do their prep properly. That does happen sometimes, and that, that's nasty. <laughs> sometimes they don't prep right, and you got yeah. stool coming out. Code brown. Code, code, code white <laughs> brown. I don't know what that is. Brown white. <laughs> so then <laughs> assist your patient to the restroom. Instruct to expel as much barium as possible. If they can't get to the bathroom, do give them a bedpan. After they have evacuated, we'll do one final <coughs> radiograph to check the mucosa and check that they properly evacuated and nothing's being um, retained. If the evacuation is inadequate, the patient may be given a hot beverage for stimulation. Repeats post evac as requested after they evacuate one more time. By the way, evacuation is the word for defecation. Make sure you know that. Um, one thing I didn't mention if you are mixing your barium with water, don't use cold water. It's very uncomfortable. You want to use room temperature water. On the other hand, don't put hot water in there. You start flowing that barium and it's boiling hot, which I've seen somebody do. The patient did scream and was in a lot of pain. Um, you're gonna have a bad time. That was on a kid too. Yeah, yeah. Make sure it's room temperature, not cold or hot. Okay, for double contrast BEs, we have two ways we can do it, the well-in method or single stage. Well-in method is what we use for detection of small lesions. That's all you need to know about that method, by the way. We don't actually do that anymore, but they still talk about it in your book. Mm. Uh, Most important, take a break. We gotta keep going. We got lots to get through here. If you need to take a break, take a break. I'm gonna keep going. Mm. Most important requirement is that patient's colon must be exceptionally clean. That's for both single and double contrast. That residual fecal material can obstruct what we're trying to see. And we must use a suitable barium suspension. It must be properly mixed at the right consistency because if it's not mixed properly, either it's gonna clump up or it's gonna to go too fast. You want it to be balanced right in the middle. Clumping up would probably be the worst because it's gonna get kind of stuck in there. Um, but the other thing as well, if it's going too fast, they're not going to, be able to make a good observation of all the walls, the colon, see polyps, diverticula, things like that. Okay, we have a lot of projections, guys. This has the most projections. Yes, that's how many we have. These are plain films that they used to require you to do. Plain films after the fluoro has completed, and the doctor's going to have you take these as separate x-rays. Now, I have once again simplified these just to red bullet points of what I want you to know for each position. I, um, the black stuff, don't focus on that, focus on the red bullet points. That's the main points of these. Start with our PA or AP. We center at the iliac crest, just like a KUB. We are going to have our centra ray also enter at the level of the iliac crest, just like a KUB. Respiration for all these positions, by the way, will be suspended respiration. Or you'll see sometimes it'll say expiration. How do you remember that? Anything in the abdominal area, guys? 
either suspend respiration or take on expiration. Okay, what are we looking at for an AP large intestine? That's gonna be a visualization of the entire colon, including our flexures and the rectum. Basically, it's a full survey of the entirety of the large intestine. These other ones we're gonna look at are gonna look at specific parts of the large intestine. So the PA or AP focuses on the entire colon, including our flexures and rectum, the full survey. See, they're not that bad, they're kind of short. Simplifying it down to the red bullet points. PA axial large intestine. This is gonna utilize an angulation, thus the word axial. We're gonna angle 30 to 40 degrees, caudad, and we're gonna put the um, centering at the level of the ASIS. You might wanna guess what this is gonna look at, what part of the colon? It's gonna be obviously okay. elongating something. Because there's an axial. Oh, oh, no, that's uh, going to be the sigmoid? Very good. Yes, it is. Well, specifically the rectosigmoid. So rectosigmoid is going to be the star of our show for our PA axial, also our AP axial, as we'll see here very shortly. But that's to elongate this specific area. Now, if we're doing a regular AP PA, look how bunched up it is. Y'all see that? When we add the axial, it stretches it out. It takes it out of superimposition. So the axials, whether we're doing PA or AP, will elongate and allow us to get a better visual of the rectosigmoid area. PA oblique, we're gonna be talking about our LEOs or REOs. These are the ones that are notoriously difficult because each oblique of the four we do opens up a corresponding flexure. That's why we do these obliques to open up flexures. So I want you to make special note of what flexures are opened because of all the large intestine questions the registry likes to ask, that's the ones they like to ask. What flexures are being opened? Which is kind of mean, but they do ask it. Obliques, we're doing a 35 to 45 degree REO or LEO for our PA obliques. We are centering at the iliac crest towards the elevated side because we're doing it in an oblique, just like our other obliques we've done before previously. There you go, one to two inches lateral to midline of the body, on the elevated side at level of iliac crests. When we do arios and elios, it's a direct relationship. The ario opens up the right flexure. The elio opens up the left flexure. Now, based on what we always learn about obliques being kind of inverse, if I ask you which flexure do you think the LPO opens up, what would you tell me? The LPO is going to open up the right and the RPO is going to open up the left. Remember how obliques are kind of funny like that? They always go inverse. So for ARIO and LEO, one to one relationship. ARIO opens up the right, LEO opens up the left. We're going to talk about the other obliques here shortly and what they open up. And that's what you're seeing right there. ARIO opened up the right, LEO opened up the left over here. What's that? Say that again. It is. These obliques are constantly changing throughout the body. I know. So, I know. so for a large right. intestine, ARIO opens up right, LEO opens up left. Okay. It is different from the ribs. Well, but isn't ARIO and LPO? It can be synonymous with an LPO. Yes. Yeah. Actually, you remember that? That's good. That's good you remembered that. Is Melanie okay over there? She's tired of talking about colons. <laughs> This oh, shit's no, getting to it. <laughs> so how can you see it? Can you see it open, sir? Huh? Yes, you can. So here's the, R, the right open on the REO. Here's the left open on the LEO. So this is what it looks like when it's superimposed. This is what it looks like when it's more open. Superimposed, more open. Huh? It's like it's going like this. Yeah. Like a fist? I don't think I've ever noticed that before, but you're kind of right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> lateral large intestine. Lateral large intestine is gonna be a lower view of the lower portions of the large intestine. We're gonna center at the ASIS. ASIS. And we're gonna focus on rectum and distal sigmoid specifically for the lateral large intestine. Focuses specifically on the rectum and distal sigmoid. By the way, this is what I was talking about. Here's a tip. See why you can't just go straight in? If you keep going straight in and don't curve, 
you go straight through the wall of the wreck mm -hmm. to poke a hole. So you gotta curve it up as you insert the tip. Gotta be very careful with that. It's also, as I explained to y'all in a previous class, why we in the United States use the restroom incorrectly, technically, because of the way that curves. The way that we sit on toilets actually obstructs this. You gotta get the squatty potty. Hmm? You gotta get the squatty potty. You gotta pop a squat, as I say, yeah. Popping a squat's actually the proper way to use the restroom. Yes? Just random question, can you like feel if it's going straight or kind of curves? Like, there's a difference? You can feel resistance. Oh, okay. So you just kind of insert, make a slight hook, curve it up. There's a little technique to it. Where are you going, sir? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the, kind of, the way he just like turned around. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, you are packed up white? <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm out. What if we all take the early hour? Uh, <laughs> on the same uh, Alright, take care. Alright, go ahead and take a quick break, guys. Quick break. Ten minutes. Uh, I, gotta, I, gotta take, I gotta drink some water. Ten minutes.